It's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. And on top of that, the judge told us we weren't even legally allowed to be Jay and Silent Bob no more because our names were bought by some assholes from Sbarro Films. You mean Sbarro's? Yeah, those pizza-making fucks. All because some stupid movie that was made 20 years ago. It's like, come on already, move on. The dishes are done, man. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. A Keith Coogan classic. Snoogans. Well, you know, fellas, I think your legal woes have less to do with the stupid old movie that came out 20 years ago and more to do with the stupid new movie that's coming soon to a theater near you. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you guys have no idea there's a new comic book movie being made of the old comic book movie you two are the basis for. What? Again? And look, they took away my dick and made me a girl. I cannot believe they're going to remake this blunt man bullshit. Oh, it's not a remake. It's a reboot. What the fuck is a reboot? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And that was my best. Kevin Smith impersonation, because this week we're actually going to be discussing the movie Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. So basically, we're just going to be doing our little review of Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, the movie that just came out not too long ago, but I've been anticipating for so long. And we're doing our first takes, uh, our second takes, and all our best thoughts on the actual movie itself. So... Basically, Steve, what is your first take on this? Okay, <laughs> I have to be—I have to be honest. I start—I started watching it the first time, and I got to the point where they're at the mall, they're at Jason Lee's comic book shop, uh, Brody's secret stash, and yep. they're doing the dip, 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 uh, <laughs> sound. That's my best impression of it. Uh, and I just was like, oh, is this really necessary? And so I stopped it and I didn't go back for several days until Mark talked about that he wanted to podcast review it. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll go back and watch it. So I popped the Blu-ray back in and it, it picked up, it resumed where I was at. So I was like, okay, so I don't have to watch the very beginning again, which I missed. I had forgotten some stuff. So I was glad to watch it a second time. And I really, really enjoyed it watching it from that point on. And it really had a lot of, of, of heart, I thought. It's about an hour, at the, about the hour mark, really, is where you start to see that heart start to grow. And that's where, where, uh, yeah. Jay, uh, is, is out, they're out in front. I think it's, I think it's when they're out on the lawn in front of, the house and they're, they're yeah they're, justice's house yeah. and 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 the daughter goes you're gonna take us to chroma right. <laughs> right and then it, it just you start to see that heart start to emerge and then as the movie progresses i mean it still has the same irreverence the same jokes the the the, the same great things we expect from a kevin smith movie but it really when it when it starts to like I said, when it's when we start to see that softening of of yeah. Jay's character, and we start to see him, and and then the as it gets to the end, and we get to the the Ben Affleck big talky talk moment uh, with Ben Affleck, <laughs> and it's so it just became so good, and I, I'm. I can't wait to watch it again. I, I may I may wait a couple of weeks, but I'm, this is going to be a movie that I will will rewatch and and enjoy on rewatch. And I choked up a little bit at the at the very end, and we will probably talk about it. I didn't put it in my notes, but we're definitely going to talk sure. about it at the very end. The the cameo that was completely unexpected, and I choked up and almost cried this the second time I watched it as I saw his interaction with Stan Lee. And uh, I'm about to choke oh, yeah. up now with with it. It was oh. it was just so good, and you could see the heart. And uh, so yeah, I, I really really enjoyed it. And to give a little bit of background on where where I was at with Kevin Smith, I've, I'm a fan. I was introduced to Clerks in 1996 when I was stationed in Korea. Uh, one of the guys I was stationed with had a VHS copy of it. 
Oh. And so we watched it and I was, I just suddenly, I just fell in love with this, with this movie and with this filmmaker with the, cause there were so many things in my life at that time that were hitting the same kind of themes in the movie clerks. And uh, I mean, I was in a job where I was punching fucking buttons. So, you know, it was, uh, it, it really uh, hit me. So that's where my kind of background began with Kevin Smith was, was all the way back then. Yeah, well, my my first take was, honestly, I've been looking forward to this movie since I found out it was in production. And honestly, my first take was, this was basically all fan-serviced, and this is just a minor remake of what we did before with a lot of plot twists. <laughs> but, you know, as I watched it a few more times, and being the Kevin Smith fan that I have been, I started to like and love it because, yeah, it, it is a Kevin Smith movie. And I'm sorry, uh, you know, I'm a Kevin Smith fan. I've been there since day one. I, I was not able to go see the movie in 1994 in the theaters. I was anticipating it because everybody was like, I guess they, they had all these things going about how this great movie Clerks was at Cannes and all this other stuff. I heard all the brouhaha that was going on, but I was only able to see Clerks when it came out on VHS months later in 1995. And then, of all things, and this is a kind of funny side note, I, I rented the movie, it said Clerks on it, the, the guy at Blockbuster handed it to me, and what I put in, and I didn't even read it as I put the tape in, I just put the tape in, and it was uh, Primal Fear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, somebody stole the clerk's tape from... Yeah, I, from. or they mismanaged. Yeah. I don't know, but I, the next day I was like, dude... You gave me the wrong All right, tape. this is what you gave me. And he goes, did you watch it? I'm like, yeah, but this is not what I rented. <laughs> but he goes, did you watch it? I'm like, yeah, I liked it, but oh my God, <laughs> this is not the movie I wanted. So... Then he, he goes, all right, free of charge, and hands it to me, and I watch it that night, and I was in love from day one. So I, I loved it, and, you know, I, I just got enamored with the whole Jersey thing with Kevin Smith and loved the idea. So I became, from then on, a Kevin Smith fan. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a funny story, though. That it's like, oh, I... I was duped. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that used to happen a lot for you know because the the boxes at, at Blockbuster just said the title of the film. They didn't have any kind of art on them or anything, and so you could easily slip the wrong movie in into the wrong box. Yeah. So, interested? That's funny. So we're going to continue on going. Our thoughts on the movie. Do you want to start first? Yeah. Let me. I'll just expand a little bit on what what I've already kind of said and just the, about how touching it was. And just the fact that, that I, I love not just the fact that we have this father-daughter relationship between Jay and Harley Quinn Smith's character, but we also see the interplay between Kevin Smith's character and her character. And we, we get, and they get to kind of make fun of the whole thing that she's in, in all of his movies. And, and then yep. the, the, the thing at the <laughs> end where he's, he's talking as I, I love the meta part of it where you have silent Bob, the character, and then you also have Kevin Smith the character and so yeah. you, you and i'm assuming he was playing a character i don't think he's actually he may be kind of like that in real i don't know i uh, uh, he, i think i think kevin is like that in character for the most part in front of any sort of character yeah, yeah. honestly but it, it just it was it was really cool that he was able to kind of make fun of that and have some fun with it and, and poke some fun at that and she was able to poke some yeah. fun at at him and his movies and just throughout the whole movie those kind of references and that's that's one of the things that this reboot was able to do that they they couldn't have done in the original and they've never really done in any of his movies is poke fun at other Kevin Smith movies. So I, I thought that was great. I thought that that part of the, that aspect of the, the the movie was was really really cool the meta kind of aspect of it the the part at the at the beginning when they're talking about reboots and, and remakes and they all look at the they all look at the camera and you know they're like we're they're just doing it to get money out of the fans that are going to watch it no matter no matter what it's like and then you see all four of them turn <laughs> and look directly at the camera it was just it was just great it was it was really fun to watch and it was fun to watch the second time and I I'm uh, like I said I, I'll watch it again here probably 
fairly soon and uh, and have just as much fun uh, watching it the, the third time. And, uh, you know, the acting is really great. But we'll get some more into that as we press on. What, what about you? What were your, like, your secondary kind of, after you had that initial fanboy blah, reaction? <laughs> <laughs> blow your ears out there um what about that on that second watch was there anything that for you kind of stood out and and became even even better or more important well the first film was a, a major film in itself it was distributed by the weinstein corporation back in 2001 which i saw in the theater and i have to agree yes i was high on <laughs> weed with my friend ray when we saw it so we were laughing our asses off in the theater but Altogether, after a few watchings, I, I thought it was a really good reboot altogether. A nice new take and flipping the script in kind of a way with Jay meeting his daughter at Millennium Falcon and going the same journey that he made in the original film in some way of destroying a film that is based on the characters they created, but with the little stipulation of they can't call themselves Jay and Silent Bob. But to come out wanting to be a dad at the end, it was a, a way of Kevin Smith showing that he was growing, but still doing what he did back in the View of Skewa days. But his daughter within the movie, you know, basically created that. So he was able to you know, pass on that legacy with his own child. And to me, I think that's really what it was for him. You know, this movie was filmed literally after he had his heart attack and he started reaching out to all his friends and he goes, the last movie I did was <laughs> Yoga Hosers? And now he's like, ah, oh, I, I have to do something. And there was always this talk about doing mole rats again and there was issues with uh, rights now they got those rights back, so now they could do a mole rats, which from I'm understanding is that they're going to do Twilight of the Mole Rats. So, and then now he resolved his issues with Jeff Anderson, who, who played Randall and Clerks. And now they're actually going to go through with Clerks I'm 3, which... I'm excited for that one, yeah. Yeah, I, I same here. Uh, it's Honestly, it's like there was an issue that nobody knew about, uh, but apparently him and Jeff, Jeff Anderson had an issue years ago. And I remember the podcast on Smodcast when he had Jeff Anderson, and they were actually talking about Clerks 3. And it never went through. And I always was wondering whatever according, happened to According to the movie. IMDb trivia... What the issue was, was that sure. he had a script for Clerks 3, which Jeff Anderson read and did not like, mm -hmm. and so refused to do the movie. And that was where – that was what broke their relationship. And then some point – I don't know. It doesn't say when. It says there was some point where they were together at like a, a con or a fan event, and they were signing merchandise, and they spent the whole day together. Yeah. They resolved their issues, and Kevin supposedly completely threw out that script that Jeff Anderson didn't like and started writing a whole new one with stuff they had talked about that day. So that's 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 according to the IMDb ah. trivia. So I don't know where IMDb trivia gets its information from, but that's that's according to what they said. Now, and help me out with this because I I I didn't see him listed in the credits. Sure. He, I didn't see him listed anywhere. But isn't Jeff isn't he the guy at the beginning, very beginning of the movie when they're arresting? Uh, when they've got uh, Brian O'Halloran on the car and there's this guy with this big old thick beard and his hat on backwards and he's eating popcorn, that to me looked like Jeff Anderson. I have to go back and rewatch. <laughs> um, yeah, check it out because it really looks like him, but there's no mention of it in the credits. There's no mention anywhere. So I could be wrong. It may have just been somebody else. And uh, so, but there, there's a, there, it's a quick cut scene during that whole, I don't remember if it's during the, hmm. the Buffalo Bill thing when uh, when Jay pulls his pants and there's just this quick camera pan shot where it pans back to I think this it guy is. who's yeah. got a big old thick beard and big old long hair and he's eating popcorn and I swore that looked like Jeff Anderson to me both times I watched it but I, I, I could be wrong though because like I said he's got a huge old gigantic you know Duck Dynasty type mm. beard going. So check it out and let me and let me know. <laughs> yeah, that warrants a rewatch, definitely. Yeah, and to add on to what uh, you were talking about with the previous script, it was pretty much them geriatric and very old and dying at, oh. at, at in that clerk script. They actually did a reading for that script that was thrown away for pretty much for donations for a, a cause in New Jersey. 
So they got a lot of the people from the original clerk's staff and then they implemented certain actors to come in to read for other characters to read that script so they could get donations for their cause. So I was offered that at, you know, I get emails constantly from VSQ, Kevin Smith, uh, The Secret Stash, but I was like, ah, I don't have a hundred bucks and I don't want to have to drive mm-hmm. three hours. And, you know, I, it's a good cause, but I donated, you know, uh, as much as I could at that point just to be like, here, here you go. But apparently they read and they did a theater mm-hmm. reading of that script. And now that, you know, hopefully Clerks 3 will come out. But I just hope it doesn't, you know, skew when Moose Jaws <laughs> comes out because I've really been looking forward to Moose Jaws, honestly. But you know, I we digress and yeah. we have to move on and move forward. So we'll talk about our favorite moments in the movie itself. So I'll start off with one, and Steve will go on to his, and then we'll Absolutely. go back and forth. So uh, the first one I have would be: I love to seeing Method Man and Red Man. The hallucination about having kids. It was great to see Cliff again on screen, to be honest, you know. And by the way, listeners, I used to work in a recording studio in Staten Island and various recording studios within Manhattan and within the New York area. So where I worked in Laughing Dog Studios, uh, the Wu-Tang Clan was kind of the guys that just showed up at times. So Cliff, or Method Man, as you know him, would just come around and hang out when family or friends would be recording at Laughing Dog or Mystic Studios or where have you, where I've been. But little funny thing is I used to smoke a lot of cigars back then. I would have like maybe one a day or whatever and hang out with the producer or engineer that was working there. And Cliff used to steal my (laughs) Macanudo cigars out of my backpack <laughs> when we were recording i i i just love that because every time i bring that up to him he goes oh man those are good i'm like yeah they're good yeah it's that they're not meant for rolling blunts dude <laughs> they're good for like smoking just normally but um anyhow i i just love the idea the fact that i got to see cliff and a movie again and see red man and it's funny, as I looked and I seen him on, on the actual screen on my TV and going, wow, <laughs> he doesn't age at all. <laughs> so <laughs> kudos to that. And uh, I just love Method Man and Red Man and their uh, little cameo in that movie. Yeah, so th- that goes right into one of mine that I just kind of added to the notes, which is uh, there were a lot of scenes that were that were callbacks, and but not specifically the same from the original movie and that particular scene that you're talking about where they're dreaming of method man and uh um, red man red man thank you in in the van after they've they've taken they've eaten eaten the edibles you know that calls back to the mystery machine scene from the original in the in the original movie where they were smoking and and had the dream about the scooby-doo van that they were in they're they were all when they were all smoking so i i really liked those little touches throughout the movie and those are the kind of things that upon rewatches in and I may go back and, and rewatch Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back just to to see if I can pick up more. Oh, there because are because you got you got some in your notes because there was a lot in there. And I'm sure there were ones that I missed that were specific callbacks to that the original movie, but not exactly the same. So not enough to take you out of it if you haven't seen the movie, but enough that if you have seen the movie to go, oh, I just like when they walk into the mall and they're they're walking past that just the different areas of the mall that we see that that call back to mall rats there's yeah. th- different things yeah. so yeah the fact that that uh, jason lee is holding that little cup through the whole scene doesn't doesn't say anything about it takes a few drinks out of it but doesn't doesn't make any kind of mention of yep. it that that calls back directly to mall rats where he walked around the mall with that little tiny cup getting <laughs> getting drinks from different places so yeah I, I thought those little touches in the movie really really impressed me And that comic shop in the mall actually refers to something that a lot of listeners and comic book enthusiasts don't understand, is that when Kevin Smith actually was looking to do his own comic book shop back in uh, the mid-90s, after the whole thing of Clerks and Mallrats and Chasing Amy, he created the, the Secret Stash. So he actually went out to Jim Hanley who is uh, out of the Fantastic Store on Staten Island in Newdorp, 
originally. And then Jim had created his own comic book shop in Eltingville in Staten Island, right across from the Eltingville train station, which I went to. I actually went there before they actually opened, so I'm a Hanley kid at heart. Jim eventually in time went into the mall where everybody thought, oh, in the 80s, oh, that's the place to do. And eventually that kind of died out. And then Jim wound up opening up back in Newdorp again, Jim Hanley's universe. And eventually, I, from my understanding now, I haven't looked back or I haven't researched it that much. The last time I was there, it was like a small little cottage style house that had a, hmm. uh, a comic book shop in it. So that was kind of referencing how the malls were dying and nobody's are doing, which kind of segues into Twilight of the Mall Rats movie that uh, Kevin is working on. So, hmm. and yeah, I haven't heard anything about that one. So, so basically, Kevin was kind of saying okay and showing homages to that. And like I said, I was a Hanley kid, I always went to that Jim Hanley's universe. By the train station, I always went to the mall one. I used to go to the one when they reopened. It was a little bit larger in Newdorp and then uh, in Staten Island. And then eventually they wound up opening up a small shack kind of place not too far from the Newdorp Staten Island Library. So I think they're still there and they still have a Manhattan store as far as I know. So those are a little bit underground and fluid kind of information that's going on. Not many people know or understand. So that's a little bit of inside knowledge because I was there <laughs> and I had actually been listening to Kevin. And, uh, and I always recommend go listen to Kevin's previous podcast too because – they actually, he talks about it with the comic book men on a previous episode of Smodcast about how they went to Jim Hanley and how to open up their own comic book shop. So that's where this all stems from. So that was my little segued bit of information. <laughs> so I'll continue on with my little uh, feedback on my favorite moments, which would be the end scene when Silent Bob sees that iron suit and comes in as Iron Man to help Jay and the girls in the con. I, I I was grinning ear to ear with that one. I loved that idea. Yeah, I think he deep down wanted to be Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, that was great when he says uh, when he says as Kevin Smith, he's, "Oh, somebody's getting sued." <laughs> and then they show they show Silent Bob, and he's in the in the helmet, and he's got the heads up display like Tony Stark had. And, and yeah, that was a real real cool. What was yours? My second one was that uh, that that quick cameo scene with Kate Micucci and Jennifer Swalbeck Smith there in the movies. I, I thought that was great. I love I love Kate Micucci and. and Ricky Lindholm, they're, they're uh, Garfunkel and Oates, a, a comedy music duo. They're uh, often on podcasts that I listen to. And so it was really, really cool to to see her and just see that that character and the, the way the way she interacted with Silent Bob, the way then Jennifer pulls Silent Bob into the, the bathroom. <laughs> and, you know, in real life, they're married. It, it was just really cool. And uh, I don't know, was it just me? And I, I don't mean this, please don't anybody hate me she jennifer smith swabach looked rough i don't know if she was if they the, the way they did her makeup or or something but she looked rough in that as that character she gained a little like, bit of weight i always thought of her in the original movie as being extreme i'm like who's that extremely skinny woman well yeah i had to i had to look up who she was because i didn't recognize her at first I did. but it just i did it just but she looked she looked rough to me man i i, I think that with being a home mom doing everything what she does and i don't think you know a lot of people don't exercise they do their thing and they get into a regular regiment she's a mom yeah, you know, I don't I, mean even that. I mean, she just looked like she looked looked haggard. Like her face looked, like I it, it it I don't know. It just didn't. It just it it just really surprised me that she looked. Well, you know, she you know. is in a Kevin Smith movie, and she's not a Kevin <laughs> Smith dynamic, according to him. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> even so, though she's I, married to him. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to want to sound bad when I say that. I just, I just thought it was, it was because you know he's lost so much weight and and he looks so different. I, I think she's got a lot going on. You know, she's got her daughter, she's got him. So yeah. you know, give her her 
you know, she's doing her best. And I, I think she did a great job, but I like that little, she goes, I had a little bit of vegan. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> you know? That was, it was, it was a great, it was a great, that whole scene was just really good. And Fred Armiston in the background getting, getting arrested by the police officers is just his, his kind of throughout the, the movie thing was really cool as well. So my next bit that I loved, honestly, this is going to be pretty long, but I loved everything of it. So basically you you could interject too, Steve. Yeah, for sure. Because honestly, pretty much all the View Askew cameos. Yeah, we got the Clerks panel in black and white, and Jay and Silent Bob both scream at the same time. <laughs> and I know you love that too. Yeah, that was my that was actually my favorite single moment. If I had to pick out a single moment that I love, was them breaking into that that room and seeing that panel and uh, and all the the people that were up there. Some of the side characters, not not all, and uh, not all the the characters from from Clerks, but definitely uh, some of the some of the the, mo the more memorable ones, uh, Veronica and and that. Um, I really I thought it was really funny. If you noticed it, I I had to slow it down to watch it on the second watch because I didn't notice on the 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 comic book men panel Walt Flanagan is there yeah. and he's also on the clerks panel but they have Walter Flanagan too on uh, on his little <laughs> name card and i think even in the credits they list him as Walter Flanagan and Walter Flanagan too it was pretty pretty funny funny moment there but yeah that was that definitely that black and white moment was uh, was one of was probably my single favorite moment i should ask Walt that if i go back to the stash anytime soon <laughs> uh the other parts would be Joey Lauren Adams and Ben Affleck as Hobo McNeil and Alyssa Jones and having a kid named Amy. Come on, that came straight out of Chasing Amy. Absolutely. And that kid, I believe that's Jason Muse's daughter. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's Logan. Yeah. So that, that was pretty cool that we actually get to see her. Now you got two Muses on one film. So <laughs> that's awesome. So, and then also Shannon Elizabeth and as just Rosaria Dawson and Rosaria Dawson as, uh, you know, parents of Millennium Falcon. So definitely awesome. You know, we finally get Rosaria back. We got justice back. And oddly enough, it, it's funny when I see Shannon Elizabeth at cons, she wears a lot of makeup. And when mm. I saw, when I actually saw Joey Lauren Adams, the last con, she wasn't wearing as much makeup, but mm. Joey looked better than Shannon in his film to me. And I don't know if it had to do with lighting or makeup or anything, but kudos to uh, Joey for her cameo on that. But uh, Rosario always looks amazing, honestly. I love mm. her character and I love you know her as an actress definitely ralph garman that was awesome to see and uh, if those of you listeners don't listen to hollywood babylon i suggest it i i listen to it regularly they've been on hiatus at the moment for the fact that you know kevin's been doing this reboot show but the fact that we got ralph garman and him doing a character is always fun to watch and if you haven't seen lava lantula go see it there's another one, uh, I think it was a Kabuki Man movie that he was in, maybe part two, and he does a cameo at the bar, so go see Ralph Garman, you know, he, he's an awesome, you know, feature in Kevin Smith's world. Unfortunately, Mark Bernard had no dialogue, but we did get to see him, and definitely Jason Lee as Brody Bruce uh, in the mall comic shop. You know, the secret stash in there pretty much, and it's their way of like implementing, hey, come see us <laughs> in Red Bank, New Jersey. Plus, seeing uh, that Walking Dead sign there, too. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, don't, uh, what was it? Don't enter dead inside, or yeah, I didn't. I noticed it the second time. Oh, you I did? Think, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that that to me, I was like, oh, right there. It's like a uh, Robert Kirkman cameo. <laughs> sort of. Chris Jericho as the head of the White Nationalists. You know, a scene that really, uh, honestly, I, they could have written it differently. Uh, it didn't have to be a White Nationalist, but I guess they had to have some people being evil in some way. But I would have liked to have seen, you know, Chris as a different. But you had a little note about the whole White Nationalist scene, didn't you? Yeah, th that you know that gave a chance for for Kevin Smith to do the whole Alec Baldwin, Glenn Larry, Glenn, Glenn Ross uh, 
monologue from the movie uh that he does about the you know always be ducking instead of always be closing <laughs> and uh, and said so, and that was a really good i mean as soon as he started talking like i he he talks so seldom in this movie but he, he talked more than i think some of the other movies he's, yes he has. he's been in um i mean as silent bob like he talked plenty as kevin smith but when but as the the silent bob character that was a really cool uh again just another cool monologue and with chris jericho going who are you you're you, you know <laughs> what do you say Pitchforks are for Klansmen, you know. I I thought it was a, I, you know, I didn't. It didn't feel misplaced to me. It uh, it gave a, a good. It it that scene really has no callback at all to the original. No. to the original movie, and but it's it's what gets our protagonists back together because remember the girls at that point the girls had separated from them, mm -hmm. and so they had to find some way to bring them back together. And I thought I I liked it. I thought it was a really cool way for them to also then throw in the whole thing about how Fred Armisen's character, you know, earlier in the movie, Fred Armisen says that he had to quit selling hater tots because <laughs> that the, the white nationalists had picked it up and it was, it was there. Yeah. Their thing. So it, that was a cool kind of callback to earlier in the movie when we saw them talking about the, the hater tots. And, and so I, it didn't feel misplaced to me. It didn't feel out of place. It, it, it really felt like a good, a good segue to get our protagonists back together, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it served its purpose. But to me, it's like, uh, they could have done something different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and, it, you know, there wasn't the, the thing is, though. And I still, I'm going to defend this scene because I really, I liked it as a scene. They didn't do a lot of white nationalist rhetoric. They didn't do, it, it, they simply had the white robes and the burning cross. And so, I mean, I understand, I guess it, it, it some people might not like it, but I thought it was okay. Uh, it was okay, but in my opinion, it could have been done differently. Not with white mm -hmm. nationalists. It could have been something okay. completely different. But Black Panthers. <laughs> no, 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 not even that. It could be anything. It could be like, you know, like people who believe in aliens are flat earthers. So who knows? Okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, the next part I would love and definitely loved was Chris Hemsworth as himself yeah. with all the Thor references constantly throughout the whole yeah. film. Especially it's like, oh, I'll let him do me until i'm <laughs> thor and he goes so it's like and he brings that up again as his hologram yeah. it's like yeah it's like don't come here don't try to fillet the actual hologram yeah. you might get burned yeah. <laughs> it's like all these cool things uh the fact that it's like oh it's like oh you i will not respond if you say you could do me until i'm thor yeah. and they actually bring that back which is pretty cool so uh, they, I, I thought it was cool the second the second time they see the hologram when he's like I wouldn't even be in this movie you know <laughs> yeah exactly I, I, those are the, those are the kind of lines from the movie making fun of itself that I really I, I really like about Kevin Smith especially about this particular movie but yeah and the girls were all the girls were really good <laughs> really good about this in this movie yeah uh, they were casted very well uh, even though it was kind of like depicted as almost as you had your deaf person. You had somebody who was Iranian or somebody Muslim. Who, I think she was meant to be Muslim, yeah. Muslim. Muslim in yeah. fact, in, in a sense, that's like it, they were all brought together. And the one person that was like the, the person out of the ordinary was Chinese. <laughs> that was the one that was. Turned out to be Russian. To, turned out to be Russian. Really yeah. Russian at that point. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, all right, let, they, they flipped the script in a sense. Of like, oh, okay. Anybody could be anything at this point. So it made sense for that point. So I love that idea. That was hilarious. And then lastly, Matt Damon as Loki and reprising his role from Dogma and explaining to the audience that what had happened to him and then giving a narrative of what was going on within the movie as it went forward. So the fact that we got Matt Damon back, honestly, you know, he was him and Ben have been in and out of Kevin's movies over the years and everybody forgets him because he was in Chasing Amy. He missed out on Mallrats, but he was supposed to be in Mallrats at one point. And then they brought him in as in Chasing Amy, but they cut that particular scene when they were going to meet the people that were going to do the Blunt Man and Chronic movie hmm. and or some sort of promotional ad within Chasing Amy. I could be wrong. 
but the fact that they cut him out entirely out of Chasing Amy, but he was actually in there. So if those of you who have not watched Chasing Amy and want to get into Kevin Smith movies, go to Clerks, go to Mulrats, and then go to Chasing Amy. And if you get the special edition, you will definitely see Matt Damon's cutscene in that because they add the deleted scenes. Nice. Yeah. So the only last thing I, I had that I just added is is we already kind of talked about it a little bit, but it really touched me uh, – to see the whole Stan Lee oh, yeah. scene at the end credits and, and the fact that Kevin Smith made that. Stan Lee was supposed to have some sort of big role or at least be definitely be in this movie and he passed away before they they began filming. So the fact that, that Kevin still had this footage from whatever Comic-Con it was. Uh, San Diego were, Comic-Con of yeah, the, whatever the year, year it was. previous. And, uh, yeah, and it was on the IMDb boat. Yeah, it was really cool that he had that footage and they were able to, to cut that in and, and, and show that because it just was really, really cool to, to see Stan Lee again on, uh, uh, on, on my TV. So Yeah, definitely. So we have a, a few favorite quotes. I'm going to have you start off. Sure. I, uh, I really just, it was, it stood out to me the, the, the first time I heard it. And the second time I heard it, I even laughed even harder was when they were talking about going to Hollywood and Jay says, Hollywood, where we struck back, yo. <laughs> so I thought that was, <laughs> thought that was really cool. Yeah. I have one where it was uh, Holden McNeil saying, it's just us. We're the Just Us League now. And I, that was to uh, Jay, Jay Muse's daughter. I love Which that whole insane. line. You know, he he starts out. He says, he says, "Man, they're gone, girl. They must be on the town." Yep. Like, like his, the whole line is just different movies of his until he finally gets to uh, the Just Us uh, League, and she just kind of looks at him, and he was like, "Okay." <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was a, that that whole line was really funny, and he delivers it really well. Oh, definitely. Uh, the next one I had was the one when they're in the house, and and uh, uh, Harley. <laughs> uh, um, Millennium Falcon keeps calling them meth heads, and finally uh, Justice says, "No, they only look like meth heads because they're from New Jersey." I thought of you, Mark. <laughs> uh, I have to add this too because uh, the pot merchants at Chronicon. I've been waiting to say this uh, for a long time. Two hundred bucks, little man. Put that shit in my hand. <laughs> and that was a throwback to the original Jay and Silent Bob movie where you got the two kids in the very, very beginning trying to buy Get weed. a nickel bag. Yeah. yeah. Get a nickel bag. <laughs> yeah. It was like 50 bucks, little man. Put that in my hand. <laughs> and uh, that was a throwback. And those were the actual original actors from that film. That's very cool. So, And the last part would be Robert Kirkman at the end credits. Come on. Those end credits were amazing. And you have to sit for all of them. So... Yeah, he goes, yeah, Carol eats Daryl. And the fan goes, what? He goes, and Robert Kirkman goes, yeah, I mean, she literally eats Daryl. <laughs> then Jay and Silent Bob come up and give him a purple nipple, <laughs> purple nipple and say, that's for killing Glenn. And Robert Kirkman. And Carl. And Carl. They say Glenn oh, and okay. Carl. They, they do part. include Carl in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, yeah, I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Those those in credit scenes are, are are really funny. They had me rolling. Oh yeah. Well, that wraps up our talk of Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Next week we will be covering the first three episodes of Netflix's season three of Daredevil. Yeah. So let us know what you thought of season three. I believe, in correct me if I'm wrong, Mark. Season three of Daredevil picks up after the Defenders season one, right? Because that's correct. we we podcasted on the Defenders. Yeah. So okay, so that that makes sense. Why we're going to go to that, and then after that, uh, we've got different plans of different uh, possible things to go back to that Mark and I have been discussing. But if you have any ideas of what you want to hear us cover on panels to pixels, please uh, give us some, some feedbacks, uh, make a post on our Facebook page. Uh, you can contact us. There's various, various ways. And I'm just going to go straight into, if I can scroll down on my list here of ways you can submit your feedback to us because we are on your, any podcast player of choice that you choose. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we have a website that is panels to pixels podcast.com. You can submit your feedback on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The two is spelled out right there in the middle. T O the number one at the end 
at gmail.com. You can also send us a voicemail at 845-350-2095. And we are now on YouTube. So if you like to listen to your podcasts while you're vacuuming the house uh, and your YouTube channel is going, please, please look us up as Panels to Pixels on YouTube. Awesome. And there are ways for you to support us. And we actually do have a red bubble. So you could actually find that at ptppodcast.redbubble.com. And I'll say that again, ptppodcast.redbubble.com. There you can purchase product on the website that has our logo on it, and you can promote us by wearing that product, whatever product you get or purchasing. Uh, it could be a t-shirt, a sweatshirt. I got a throw pillow case at certain points, and I wound up putting a, a throw pillow on it. Or you could get stickers, and I have that on my, my laptop as well. All money made from those purchases will go to support the podcast and keep it going. We only take about 5% of the profit from each purchase to keep the costs to you so low so that way you know it's not too much so we just appreciate your support and we thank you so if you go there and you purchase something it goes to the cause of keeping this podcast going so thank you absolutely yeah i bought a I bought a hoodie there and it's so soft man it's one of the softest hoodies that i own i love it yeah, and Redbubble is very good. So if you are an artist that has artwork that you want to present and want people to have in a shower curtain, there's so many things you could do. It's just based on the size of your image. So go to it, become a Redbubble person or somebody who wants to sell their artwork on that. And then you could actually do a t-shirt, sweatshirt, shower curtain, pillowcase, anything. And there's so much things that you could sell on there. But in this case, we would just want you just to support us by, you know, supporting our brand. And if you could promote us, that would be amazing. Thank you. And we have a couple of podcast recommendations as well. I was just listening to Strange Indeed. It's is a podcastica podcast. They are, they are, they covered uh, episodes eight and nine of the Netflix show You, the second season of You. They covered episodes eight and nine this week. I, I submit feedback to them regularly. They will be covering episode 10 next week. And then I believe they're going to start covering Lock and Key once it, once it drops on February 7th. So check out Strange Indeed on the Podcasting Network. Check out all of the podcasts on the Podcasting Network. And of course, on our network, the Next Level Network, check out all those podcasts that are available there. Plus, Mark has a his own podcast network that he's part of called Talk Through Media. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about Talk Through Media, Mark? Well, I'm a co-host with uh, Brian Malosh on The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. We review The Walking Dead each week. This show will stay on the Next Level Podcast Network as always, but there will always be a link for Talk Through Media on our Facebook page for listeners as well as anybody else to get through to listen to those particular podcasts. You could find talkthroughmedia.com to get those podcasts, or you could go to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. We are currently working on a lot of things. I'm working on another podcast for Talk Through Media at the moment with Kyle McAdams, and I'm hoping that Steve could help out and be on on occasion because it will be a multiple people thing. So <laughs> keep in tune for that and go to talkthroughmedia.com for that information. Like I said, you can go to talkthroughmedia.com website and we will give you more information there as well as our Facebook page. Absolutely. And obviously I, so you can hear me right here, of course, and I submit uh, feedback to various other podcasts that are covering different, different shows. And uh, especially now check out on talk through media, check out the Picard cast, which I have submitted uh, voicemail feedback to them. And I believe Mark may even be on an upcoming episode of Picard cast. I'm hoping so. I have to submit my feedback still. So I still mm. have time. I have two hours. <laughs> yeah, get a couple hours. <laughs> I got mine in. <laughs> so I only have one YouTube recommendation. We've already talked about the Grim Life Collective last episode. I will continue to support them as well. And as well, you should as well, because they are great people. Michael and Jessica have been they're actually abroad, right? Not abroad, but they're going out <laughs> and they're visiting other places. I believe they're going to California. 
So check out the Grim Life Collective. And since this is comic based, I'm going to recommend Comics Explained on YouTube. And all you have to do is search that. And I just subscribed to them and I've been watching them for the past year. Honestly, he is very particular, and anytime a new graphic novel comes out based upon a series of comics, he's great and analyzing and giving you the whole idea of the story of what's going on within that series and that graphic novel. Like I said, check out Comics Explained on YouTube because... I'm enjoying it, and I think you guys will too, because literally without any comic book movies, where would we be? We're left with comics. So <laughs> it, he gives a nice visual with it. Uh, he gives you an idea, and he actually shows comic panels as he's describing the actual episodes of what's going on within said comics or trade paperbacks. So check Very out cool. Comics Explained. Very cool. So with that, that's our uh, show this evening. So thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. So now what do we do? I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, I've never had a kid before. Okay, I've never had a dad before. <sighs> yeah, but the thing is, is, is I don't know if I'm ready to be somebody's dad. David, old man, I, I, I get it. Like I was saying, I don't know if I'm ready to be somebody's dad, so I want to practice. And so I figured, why not start off with a dream I always had of drinking coffee with my kid and teaching her stuff that she doesn't already know. Like dad stuff, okay? Snooze. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. <laughs> I'm Steve. <laughs> and I'm Steve. And that was my and that was my best Kevin Smith impersonation <laughs> as per se. Because this week we're actually gonna be discussing the movie Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was great. I love it. That's that was so good. Go, go ahead. Sorry.